Good day. I'm the Reverend Thomas Riggs, and this is my dear wife, Wadey. We are glad you gentle people could be here today to honor our dear son, Edward, after all these years. His death in 1865, during the sinking of the steamship Melville off the coast of Hilton Head, South Carolina, was not only a blow to us, but also to the town of Queensbury and the village of Glens Falls. You see, Edward died not only in service to his country, but also to this great community. At the time of his death on the 8th day of January, 1865, Edward had already completed his service to his country, admirably fighting in the Civil War and then embarking upon a career of law in Glens Falls. He entered the Army as a lieutenant with the 118th New York State Volunteers and was quickly promoted to captain. He was discharged after only one year as he was considered medically unfit to serve. He was not happy about that, no sir. He wanted to finish his service and he missed his troops greatly, but he had almost died from disease. Dysentery, diarrhea, and malaria took the lives of many boys on both sides. Mr. Stephen Brown, who himself lost a son to the war, found Edward in a hospital near Yorktown and brought him back to us. We were glad that he had returned home, gotten well, and started a new life in law practice. Edward was no ordinary child. He was born during our call in Westmoreland, New Hampshire in 1837. He was a bright child who learned to walk and talk before most other children. He had an eagerness to read and even as a young age expressed a genuine love of literature and the fine arts. He wasn't a boisterous <laughs> child, oh, quite the contrary. He much preferred reading and music and the studies of religion. I thought he would follow in my footsteps into the ministry. He was known by his teachers for his truthfulness and fidelity, and he would never shirk any duty. I was so proud of him when he entered the University of Vermont in 1857. He was a, such an industrious lad and, and very well liked. His very special friend was the Reverend Howard, uh, late of Johnson, Vermont. Oh, Reverend Howard was quite distraught over the loss of his worthy friend. Edward was also mourned by thousands during a memorial service in February 1865. Well, dear, we haven't yet told these good people what happened to Edward, how his love for this community caused his death. You see, Edward was not shot in battle, nor did he die of disease. He was lost at sea en route to Savannah to gather troops recruits in the name of the town of Queensbury. In late 1864, President Lincoln called for an additional 300,000 troops to help fight the war. As the number of available men decreased, the government put a quota on each municipality. If that quota was not met, the municipality had to pay a bounty for each unfilled position. The year previous, with Lincoln's call for 500,000 men, Edward, in the spirit of civil duty, went to the Southwest and raised troops in the name of Queensbury, saving the town and the county over $40,000. A miraculous feat. By December 1864, General Sherman had taken Savannah. Many men were poor, and Edward thought that this would be the perfect place to raise troops for Queensbury. Town fathers and Glens Falls officials once again called upon Edward to do this work, to go to Savannah. He left on this civil duty with Daniel V. Brown, a close friend from the village. They left on January 5th, 1865, with 60 other passengers out of New York on the steamer Melville. Shortly after passing Staten Island, a part of the ship's machinery broke and they had to be towed to Brooklyn. The ship was repaired and they set sail the next morning at 6 a.m. We received a brief message from Edward by way of a letter to his sister Ellen. This was the last word we ever heard from him. The day started pleasant, 
but then the weather changed and ice formed on the decks and rigging. Suddenly the hull split and water rushed into the forward cabins. Fearing the worst, the captain ordered the first of the two lifeboats to be loaded. But before it could be launched, the extra weight broke off the railing, precipitating all into the angry sea below, including the ship's captain who had been trying to restore order. None of them were ever seen again. The crew and remaining male passengers bailed the steamer throughout the night as one young lady read the Bible to them. They burned the mail and other combustibles, hoping to signal an approaching schooner. At 10 the following morning, the second lifeboat was launched, containing the ladies and a few others, hoping to reach the schooner in time to return to save the others. But suddenly, without warning, the Melville sank, its wake capsizing the lifeboat, putting all into the surging seas together. The only survivors were a mate, an engineer, and a passenger named Mr. Boyden. For over 12 hours, they clung to fragments of the wreckage before they were rescued. Mr. Boyden remembered Edward and, and Mr. Brown and reported that they braved the dangers and suffered the cold and fatigue that awful night with manly fortitude and courage. You can be sure that Mr. Brown and my son labored through those long hours with no thought of their personal safety. Their honor remains unsullied by any thought or selfish deed. They died as men. On February 10th, 1865, over 1,000 people attended a memorial service at Union Hall in Glens Falls. Over 1,000 people had to be turned away. Business of all description was suspended. The stores, the offices, and the shops were closed and the streets of Glens Falls wore a solemn appearance in keeping with the general feeling of gloom that pervaded the entire community. It was due to the death of our son and the death of Daniel Brown that the town of Queensbury resolved to build the Civil War Monument that you see just down the road from here today. They resolved to commemorate the sacrifices and the services of the soldiers of Queensbury as well as the memory of their late fellow citizens, Edward Riggs and Daniel Brown. At the same meeting that they resolved to build the memorial, they also resolved to give our daughter $260.78 to indemnify her for the loss of her brother. Part of that money was used to build this monument. We did not live in Glens Falls but we chose to be buried here in hopes that if Edward's remains were ever found, the people of Glens Falls would know where to bury them and we would all be together. We are still waiting and praying for that day that Edward's remains will be found and we can lay him to rest right between us instead of just being a name on a monument. As all parents of those who lose a child to war we are proud of his bravery, but we wish that he could have lived a long, fulfilling life here before we met him on the other side. Good day. Good day.